I think we'll call the meeting to order. Um, introduction and members of public attending this meeting. We have no one. Um, public discussion of any item not on the agenda. Nope. Uh, consideration of the minutes from the February 2nd meeting. I move approval. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hard to talk with candy. <laughs> <laughs> I am not sure. Wendy, we have an IT question. Yeah. Um, which network should be used to access the internet? Um, I think CIC guest. That's what I'm on. Did you, and, and you check the little box on the um, thing. It might, do you think you could help? Do you know? Uh, and then I would go to the email, or go to your internet, because it'll pop up with like a box. Hmm. Um, and like maybe search, oh, you're on it, maybe like search for something. I've never used the internet here. So I'm like, wow. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> super secret. That seemed to be working. Okay, um, while that's going on, uh, scoring and determining funding for our 2023 matching grant program. Yeah, and so I'll pose to you all, if you would like to um, look at how the scores came out first and then um, discuss uh, the merits or not of, of each of those and arrange uh, the dollars requested into perhaps these columns on the right. Sorry, I'm switching back. Um, or go through and talk about them all and then see how the scores came out. Are they sorted by score right now? They're, they are sorted by highest score at the top right now. Can you scroll down so we can see there? Sure. And right now, how far down would our funding go? Um, it would leave out, let me grab these like this. Our, we have $30,000. Whoops, I'm in, not in the right column. I need to be in this. So we have a total requested amount of 40,000, 10, 40, what was that, 47,000? And I'm looking uh, right at the bottom. So right here down to Dustin Kelly's, that uh, you can see in the very, very bottom is a total $28,710. And we have $30,000 to work with. Now, some of you had comments about some of these. The ones in blue actually needed Parks and Rec um, input, so Julie had given that. Um, and maybe we could discuss the first blue one. Yes, so my concern on that one is that in the past this group has said it wouldn't fund things that didn't happen on um, public property or like uh, business property that's open to the public all, all the time. And I noticed that several spots on this are uh, private homes. So and it's not that I don't think it's a good idea. I just, that's the question we need to answer. Would we, would we oh, provide money for things that happen in a private home? Didn't we, there was that one orchestra proposal that was taking place on someone's front porch. Didn't we fund that? And I will say, um, I, I haven't been to last year's Poetry Al Fresco, but uh, I did the first year, and it does happen um, like in the lawn or on a porch. So in theory, one could just walk up and hear view. And last year, I believe the, the porch light, I did not attend, but the porch light event that was readings, and there are some other things involved with it, I think, is on a piece of private was on a piece of private property as well so I don't have a problem with it as long as the mm -hmm. group's okay with that that was my only 
the only question, procedural question on it. And as far as using the park, McPherson Park is perfect for it. So I just say I I'm comfortable with that because it's on the front lawn. So like it's ADA accessible, you know, like from the sidewalk, which would have would be my concern. Talk about the next one. The next one, yeah. Um, the next one, I'm uh, in generally in favor of it. I would like to see a letter from the Northside neighborhood saying he says that he has their, or the person says they have their support, but I, I would feel better if we had something a little more concrete about that. And since it's going permanently into a park, I'd like to have the right to refuse or to, to review it to make sure that it's appropriate. It, it, I'm guessing it'll be just fine with these artists that are involved, but. Um, would definitely want to have a city review before they do the final work. Okay. And I, um, so I, I did not help with this and I did not look at this, but I am a, a North side resident. And so I, I knew about it. Um, I don't think that would be an issue. And obviously if you want your money, it can't be an issue. <laughs> you know, so it's um, froze the wrong screens. Okay. Um, so what I was wondering is if we should put, ones like like this that you'd like to have um, neighborhood support and also review the design in in a conditional column so we'll have a yes column and a conditional column and once those two total no more than thirty thousand dollars i guess the ones after that would not we wouldn't have money for i don't them. i don't see either of those conditions holding this one back but i just feel like it would be a, something Absolutely. we should do sure. for Okay, so right now the first four seem good to everybody to put in the yes column. Oops, sorry. Well, it's not wanting to behave here. Nobody has any problems with that, is that right? And I guess we haven't talked about the possibility of spreading the money farther by reducing the requested amount from, say, 3500 to 3000 or something like that to be a way to spread it out a little bit more. But it does change the dynamics in, in, in or the economics in a project that, you know, might be completely underfunded with $500 less. Hard to say. But I can say, we go through first? Yeah, let's go All through let's first. Go, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then we'll see if we want to try to find money for somebody else. Okay. And then is there any way to um, re reduce the size um, or the magnification on the spreadsheet to see? Um, just to, like, and maybe it's not possible, but to just be able to see the the title and you know oh, all bring it columns. Yeah, yeah, I was. That's sorry. Yeah, thank you. Is that better? No. no. <laughs> Let me see what you're seeing here. <laughs> so, mostly the columns. You can kind of see. I what's, think it's on your screen. Oh, His no, isn't like weird. that. It's different on your screen yeah. than yours. Um, oh, bummer. Okay. His, well, can you? Can you have any control? I already tried poking it. <laughs> it doesn't work. Okay, let me let me pull it over to the right on this one because we do have a lot of room. Yeah. That better? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So. So so far we do like the first four. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make the print a little bigger. Um, and for some reason it froze all those panes. I just want it to freeze the top. Okay. Hopefully nobody's seasick. Yeah. Did that move for you guys? Yeah, it went okay. too far. Yeah, I think you want one too, too far. far. There you go. Okay, sorry. So south of 6th Business District, 
that is on private property. However, you can see it from the parking lot. Yeah, it, my only my only question was if it is on the exterior. Obviously, it's it's fully you know fully public. But I know there were potential you know um, designs for it inside. Which again, you can walk into the building and see it. You know, I didn't know if we wanted to make any sort of um, distinction on that of yes it's private property and but there's you know exterior very public versus you know you have to do an extra step but what is there what business owns that patio the the business uh, the, the landowner is Southgate and they've made it possible um, to take what was the old slumber land which was even before that a grocery store and um, they've built um, indoor storage units where you can rent a closet basically or a little garage indoors behind this area and then in the very front they've created four storefronts and a, um, and a space for a restaurant for small businesses to operate and those small businesses use a common area that includes an indoor common area but also the outdoor common area which is where the old grocery carts used to be stored. Did you see the photo of the, um, okay, close your eyes while I move quickly through this. Let's see. I was gonna say, I, no, I'm sorry. Um, I know we had, like, we had talked about that area and that location for public art, but that there wasn't really a, a city owned, like there wasn't truly like city land in which to place public art in that area. So I do think both like our concern about private property is very much valid, but also like we've already explored how our options for kind of something more public on city land aren't necessarily possible. So um, I just question the longevity of it, you know, because it does look, you know, I mean, how long will that, you know, until that property is deemed of value and sold to some developer but that could be that redevelopment has happened so they're at the beginning of a new life basically and the and the property owner now will they'll be hanging on to that and they have a vested interest in helping this south of six, six district go forward there's a lot of momentum right now and I and I know that because of the other hat I wear in, in this job is in economic development. Um, for about two years, um, a grassroots neighborhood association has um, lobbied for the ability to operate a self-supported municipal improvement district, which uh, uh, is an, a self-assessment of an additional tax, which is collected and then used to promote the area and do um, things that help it um, basically come alive. So they can do programming, they can do beautification, lighting, streetscape, whatever. Um, and they're the ones that actually, that organization is the one that actually has presented um, this, this grant. They, um, they feel like the, the landowner there, Southgate Development, has um, bent over backwards to create this South District Market, which is the parking lot facing or the retail kind of side of this, what's indoor storage in the many hundred square feet behind. Um, so I think it will, I think it will go for some time. Um, the city's certainly interested in the economic health of that area and saw, and, bent, and the city also bent over backwards to make the zoning work for the retail up front and the storage behind. So I don't have any doubts that, at least for a good long time, that retail and restaurant area will survive. And so is the, so in the picture it shows like seating? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is that already in existence? Um, I don't know if the patio furniture is out there yet. They had an open house or ribbon cutting last week. The indoor furniture was. I think the outdoor stuff is out. Because, I mean, well, well, they have two pictures. One shows nothing, I guess, how it is. I, I couldn't tell. And then the second one is with the seating and marking where the paintings are. 
at the top of your page, what page number is it? And I'll flip to that. Um, this is page 103 and 104. Okay, so. Yes, yeah, so I, I mean, I'm just curious about, because the budget is big. I mean, they're just only asking for the, you know, the, uh, the full amount, but, you know, just what's in here. I mean, it's a hundred or ten thousand dollar project ten thousand dollar project ten ten thousand yeah and is that just to paint the walls yeah mm hmm it's a challenging wall because it it looks like uh, it's concrete and it it's corrugated almost where it's not a flat surface like this concrete but it's made up of a bunch of lines like this every inch or two um, which is going to be a challenge for anybody painting it. Well, I think I think you made a good case for. Um, you know, it has support definitely from the um, the owners and. So we like, we want to put that in the yes column. I would vote too. It's a 10,000 project, but they're only asking for 3,500 from us. So I feel more comfortable. All right. Um, then the you are enough mural going on the community's building. I think that could be very nice on um, Gilbert Court to consider the um, uh, the other mural, I think, on, the, on one of the city properties, and then having the community um, mural in that relatively, well, it's not the same strip of Gilbert Court, but um, that could be nice. Oh, no, I'm thinking of the Ceramics Cafe. That's, you know, north of, of Kirkwood. Um, I don't know. It's kind of nice to, I, I don't know. I think it's a nice project and concept and also um, it could be, again, it's a different kind of area of the city that doesn't have a lot of art, but it is not completely without since um, there is a mural down there with the bike library, bike library and the city building. But um, That sounds like a vote for funding that one. I would vote yes. Okay. The plein air painting pop-ups. Yeah, so Parks and Rec Review is, we'd be fine with it and actually would like to partner with this person like we would, uh, could provide the locations in the parks as long as they're in the parks and help with promotion and, and, and that sort of thing, so. Um, I would, I would ask that it be actually be part of the agreement that they partner with Parks and Rec rather than trying to do it on their own, and because we could definitely do better. Do well, <laughs> no wait. <I> didn't, <laughs> that was going to be my comment. Was like I think we they can need do to the promotion. Yeah. We can get the promotion out. Although our summer brochure has already gone out, so it would have to be later in the summer. But I didn't mean we could do the program better. <laughs> I no, and, and I think that's great because, and I think it's really great to promote Artifactory because they're really just starting and so it'll really be a, a boost for them but I don't know if they are prepared to get the word out because they're, they're struggling getting the word out so that'll be really great. Okay. I do hope they're going to be prepared though for walk-ups and people you know just curious and wanting to be more inclusive. I think that's another thing our recreation staff could help with because we do walk up programs throughout the whole summer at parks. So yeah. you know, we could probably even partner them with our summer staff who's out there to make it more successful, That'd probably. Be great. Would I put these, these that are um, conditional uh, or yes, but work with public parks and rec, 
Would I put them in touch with you first? And then yeah, and, I, and I'll get them in touch with the right staff, yeah. Okay. Great. Family yeah. Folk Machine? I'm not as excited about this one. I feel like we f have funded them a number of times, and I would rather see the money go to new and different things. I should have that. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Line 19. Oh, thank you. There it is. Oh, I thought it was a lot more than that. Or that that was just year, 2020. Okay. I think I had similar thoughts, and I, I, like, I'm not against, nor do I think you are, Julie, like funding the same part. It just seemed like, I like comparing it to like the open air media festival, which is a repeat applicant very much like came through with like, these are how things are changing and this is how we've responded to participation. And it just seemed very like stat, you know, this is what we do every year, you know, kind of maintaining a status quo or just like a regular, a regularly scheduled program that is going to be manifest as it has been, um, which was, didn't make me super jazzed about it mm -hmm. well, and I also I didn't understand the budget like what was being paid for and you know there weren't amounts like is the Engler donating space or is there you know that was but I do think um, you know an option could be then to maybe lower the amount with this you know like maybe you need to find you know reach out and get some new sponsors or something that so maybe we can revisit that one once we're all, all through or something I think we've had that exact conversation oh. <laughs> about every year with them. So it's interesting. It piques my memory. Well, then if, yeah, so it, at a certain point, it might be to um, not, you know, like you're saying, like expand, change, or seek external um, funding. Okay. I'll leave that one out for or now. Or even just why, I, in my mind, there could perhaps be much more uh, affordable venues. So like, why is it important for the, it to be at the Angler, you know? Well, but are they paying for the Angler? Oh, yeah, but yeah. I don't know, is that volunteer? Like, that was the problem with the budget, is I didn't know what, how, or what was going on. Okay, um, next one is Erica Christensen, the public candle making. Three locations in parks near pavilion or electricity at a minimum. Same as the plain air, I said I'm fine with this, but I would really like to have Parks and Rec be the partner and help with the promotion and choosing the locations. <laughs> Wendy's looking at me like she has problems. <laughs> <laughs> I have problems. Um, I, so several one is i think it's very much about self-promoting a business um which is not wrong but it is about self-promoting a privately owned business and i think that um proposing to work with with a hot and flammable with um eight plus year olds i'm not sure about that and then also the idea of will there be waivers with this video that's going on social media and you're working with children and I'm, and I'm assuming that those videos will be promoting a business. So I have some, so I have some, just some, you know, issues with that of, of how um, this information will be conveyed to participants and how the participants will be able to agree to that or disagree to that. And I think I had a, I'm perfectly fine with the project but I also feel like this is something, um, the concern for me is, is mentioning potential partner organizations, but not speaking to potential mm -hmm. partner organizations to see if they would want that or, or what those logistics might be, but to just uh, throw, out, throw out some organizations that might be fun to be at. Um, I mean, it's not necessary. I've seen this before, so it's not just this particular application, but a little bit of. So yeah. So have you thought about this a whole lot? Who to partner with? So perhaps not the most thought out of. It's kind of sounding like we should pass on this one. Um, 
Um, and then Dustin Kelly's Take a Load Off Bench Project. Um, I was not, I'm not very enthusiastic about this one due to the large size and kind of lack of detail of what it's going to be, who's going to maintain it, if it's going to be in a park. I don't mind the, the political message of it, but I, especially the parks he first mentioned, uh, we don't have room for it at Riverfront Crossings or TTRA. Um, and if it would be Weatherby, he would, he would need to get, um, support from the neighborhood not you know before we so I, I see those as being some fairly large issues with this particular one I like the project a lot but I have those same you know it's always about well who's maintaining that and who's taking care of it you know but I think it's a, a really nice piece but I think there's other like why didn't it get proposed to the park organization first or and, and that there were no images was a little bit yeah. frustrating because he's he, this person does seem like they have a legitimate art career and but yet there were no images it was void of that and it's hard to agree to something without even a schematic or any visual and so I mean do we send these back well they can watch on TV if they want but <laughs> <laughs> we send some notes back to saying more schematics and there is you know it's I mean I like the absurdity and I do like the message about you know the time like how different seats are time-based and 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 how the homeless and whatnot but also assurance that it's not going to become a problem piece mm -hmm. I think it'd be really fun it's like those giant Adirondack chairs people put I don't know why they do but they but they're fun they look kids would like it but but then it also, because kids will be climbing on it. Yeah. What is the base? How is that you know, dealt with? Um, in the past, and I've only done this one or two other times, we haven't given a lot of qualitative feedback. We've just said, ran out of money, and that was it. We could change that, though, you know, I think. And, would help make them better applicants in the next round. That's what I was going to say, especially for repeat um, applicants, it might be very helpful to have a little bit more. So, so should we call this a no for this time? Yeah, with questions. That there's, uh, there's more questions than answers. But mm -hmm. yeah, the idea is interesting, but it would have to have a good location. It would have to have safety measures in place, which adds to the expense. And, um, but that's super important because it's going to become a climbable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, on to the next one. Adar Ishemglov, Sculptural Portrait of Kurt Vonnegut. Um, I did send this one to the director of the library, Ellsworth Carmen, and I have not heard back from him um, yet. Their art acquisition committee meets occasionally um, and I'm assuming he's going to run this by them next time but um, for th for that reason if you liked it we could put it in the conditional if Ellsworth accepts it I kind of like I don't know I kind of like it um, but I think it would be very conditional on it being um, in the library or I, you know I'm trying to think of um, you know, Vonnegut's former residence, and it's a little bit f far off. You can kind of get close, but you can't really get to the porch if it's hanging out on a porch. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I feel like any funding of it is really conditional for me on the idea of having the public library or something, a more public space, Be accepting it. it. And I think it's really problematic in the atrium if you've ever been there for an event or a crowd. Yeah, there's a lot of people, and to have this <laughs> massive head, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. And also on a staircase, like it's like, but I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I, it, would, it needs a home. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I was thinking like you. There are some, um, there are some kind of more quiet spaces. I think on the second floor that might, it might, work in. But again, it depends on yeah. public library staff and. 
And I'm glad it's inside because otherwise, again, then it's also been maintenance. But it seems like the light, yeah, it seems like it should be proposed to the library first as a partner and then come to this committee. So let's, uh, am I hearing we should put that in the conditional column? I think you, I don't know, what are you thinking? I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, I, I, I don't know what it was with this round of like people being like, we want to like permanently give you these permanent objects with like no plan for them. Um, I was a little dis, I, well it was, I, if, if it's IC, yeah, if it's ICPL, it needs to go through ICPL. And then there was another about like potentially putting it on university property. Yeah. Uh, you, like, I mean, it just, it seems like uh, there's not, about 10 steps were skipped mm -hmm. to like to get to this place. And like in order for us to seriously consider it, I mean, just logistically, like right. you have to figure that out first. Right. I also kind of wonder what Kurt Vonnegut would think of a big bust of him. <laughs> like he doesn't, I mean, that's the, epitome of many things he seemed to encounter. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> just, just a thought. I sounded like a no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would just say, like, I mean, f figure out where you would like it to be, and then if it's at the library, then the library needs to accept it and make a plan for it. If, you know, like, the university wants it, then the university needs to accept it and make a plan for it, and, like, then we'll have a conversation about So, funding. So I do feel like this would be... Um, uh, this applicant would be a good a good one to then do a little bit of um, coaching, a little bit of coaching um, for. I mean, I don't know how things uh, work in Russian or Ukrainian public art. I, I don't. Um, so it might be just it might be just be good for coaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, lots of teachable moments maybe with this <laughs> this set this year. Well, and it looks like it's it is made. It is done. Right? In the true. pictures? Yeah, that's what I got out of it. So, so he's just looking for a place, place. for but it. That's okay. another reason why they could yeah. actually, the library could actually look at it and see if they want it first, and they could reapply if. But then he's selling this to us. That's true. <laughs> it's already true. made. I mean, so many grants, like, it's like you cannot start work until. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they don't. I, I don't know the condition. I don't know the. That's those restrictions. This is, I mean, I guess this is not extraneous, but this is a, at least since I've been on the committee, the second time we've gotten an application, like, re that similar, like, have they talked to the library yet? What is the relationship between ICPL's art committee and us? Mm -hmm. I mean, so I, it might, I mean, not that and those might you need changed. any more work on it, you know, but just like, it's the, it, I'm starting to get the impression that this might be a conversation to like revisit on a more policy level right. and at was, some point. Yeah, I was going to agree that this might, We've been seeing these things. Maybe we need to have a conversation about, you know. Or just put it in the wording of right. the grant that locations, partners, they don't have to be funding partners, but they have to be Agreeable. support. <laughs> you know, I can't say I'm going to go to seven schools and do this art project and not. Right. right. Schools will, won't be happy. I, yeah. Then I, I feel like this is something that. Um, that we could do as com committee members, um, you know, maybe later in the year to come up with one of those documents like we had for, you know, um, repeat, um, you know, grantees, mm -hmm. um, but some a statement sort of like that where it's it's included. Yes, you have to look at it, but it hopefully it wouldn't be so much every time back and forth if, yeah. for you to communicate that. And also, you know, when when they're presenting how the funds will be spent. There should be dollar amounts. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't just be materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially for something that's already made. Yeah. Good. Well, I really like, this is a little off topic, but the another source of granting the city um, has is um, PIN grants. They're for neighborhood improvements. And they've recently completely overhauled the way um, they expect applications to come in. And you have to have had the conversation with the representative in the Parks and Rec or Public Works or the library or whomever before you can even apply. And I think we ought to do that. Yeah, no. That's great. Yeah. And that's also helpful for, for grantees if you have sort of similar requirements and needs um, in both sets of grants. Yeah, they made some really good changes. 
I, I think that's great. This is the most I've gotten to see the grants before this group got to see them. That's why I have comments from Parks and Rec, so that's helpful. I, I think a lot of our um, people that apply don't always realize there's a difference between Parks and Rec and Summer of the Arts, and they just don't know the structure of everything, but I think trying to, trying to steer them in the right directions would certainly help. Okay, shall we move on to the film scene one? The film scene one. <laughs> there seems to be no artist. Are there pl have there <laughs> be art? Right. So has there has there been a, a reaching out to a fabricating firm, an artist who put this together? Um, I I'm just not sure they have an artist or, or a manufacturing place yet. I I thought it was it was just. It's, it's also advertising an event. It's not a standalone art piece. It's meant to, you know, so I don't, I think they should be asking permission to put that up, not for it to be funded by this organization. It just seemed like, you know, like a you know, walking man kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Eddie, you're awfully quiet. Oh, I just was agreeing. It doesn't seem appropriate to fund um, their advertising. Yeah. Okay. Are we saying no on that one? No. Uh, okay. And then we have Farrell Ulven, A History of Being. That was the planter with the vine... No budget for plants. <laughs> but I mean, my question was: This sounds great. It sounds, you know, like it could be a nice thing. But does Olven? It seems like Olven has perhaps done this before. But I also question. Um, oh, I just question the artistic. Like I, I know this person is a philosopher. And you can be a philosopher and artist, but I wanted to see a little bit more, uh, like, bona fide. Yeah. What are your bona fides on, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the art side of things? Yeah, it, it, it sounds like he did a piece for, was it Minnesota? And, um, you know, so to see images of that would have been right. very helpful. And so I had reservations also I had some safety issues with having a planter around an object that people are supposed to engage that also has plants in it but yet people are supposed to touch this you know I, I like how is that working what's the physicality of that and if there's a planter then there's hard edges and people fall again I'm just thinking of kids and safety and and there was no budget for planting so I guess the parks and recs are going to handle plants. <laughs> And, and again, it would be a permanent place. thing, that it sounds like. My, yeah. I had Andrea's concerns about just like, I, I get, you don't have to go to art school to be an artist, but I would like to see something that indicates artistic engagement. And then also, this is a permanent, right, is it beyond the, so like, what is the plan for maintenance? What is? And it sounds like it has electronics outside. Like, something to do some, some sort of sensory interact. It can pick up on interaction. Um, but sensory. But then I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it's like if you were to make you know a wooden pyramid. Do you pick that up after you're finished with it? Is it permanent? Are you supposed to hit it? With sticks? I think you're just supposed to come up to it, maybe. <laughs> but that's my art historian. Like, don't hit things. Don't hit artworks with sticks. <laughs> So um, in my review, I, I wouldn't allow it in City Park, which is his chosen location. Once again, he didn't check that out with us at all. Um, for mainly because City Park Pool is going to be under construction in a year or two, and it's going to be a, a not good site. It could, it, it could work, I think, closer in, in Kiwanis, which is a nature play area. But I had some of the same concerns and questions about fall surface. What's it made of? Is it is it appropriate for kids to be climbing on? And probably more questions than answers. So. And there's no sign it, you know, he didn't allow for any kind of signage or, pres pres you know, like, I, I, yeah, it's great to come upon and discover art, but you also sometimes need a little bit of information, especially if it's something you're supposed to engage with. Thank you for thinking of the safety issues. I, was, I am I'm in, so. No, no, I am very much in the art museum where, of course, you don't get too close. No, no. Um, so, kids are on that. No, thank you. What's happening? Thank you. 
Okay. So I'm hearing uh, no. Again, I, I'm, I think it's a really interesting project, and I wouldn't mind, but again, it's your time of hearing more about it from, from this artist, from designer, perhaps. Um, Images, if they've done, you know, they cite a piece, they should then give us. Yeah. Because it could be cool, but you get maybe more information. And then some considerations about safety, perhaps. Safety, well, yeah, work with the park yes. people, work with the experts yeah. to, so. to realize that. Okay. Um, this, shall we move on then? I'm in my right and putting a zero on that comment. Okay. Um, M. Renee Vogt's Splatter Shack for UV painting. This, this felt like an outright ask for addition on public property or our private property or private it's very space much private. it's bringing people into a private right. space not that is also up a business. to because with the poetry thing people could be on a sidewalk right. which is public space but this is you're going into a home and um, yeah so we would have to know about accessibility fire again safety <laughs> All that would have to, yeah, like, like it, it can't be a hazard. Like, you can't bring people into a, something of fire hazardous space. Is 940 South Gilbert, I should have looked this up, is that down by Big Grove and it's, somewhere No, it's actually um, north of Kirkwood. I think it's maybe on the block just north of Kirkwood on Gilbert Court. Um, I did look at it on a map to see. I was thinking, like, wow, it's right just across the train tracks from my office. But no, it is not. Um, it's, I think, just north of, of the Kirkwood. So in a little have. commercial building, probably. Yes, it looked like a small commercial building. It didn't, I don't, my impression briefly on Google um, was that it's not like in a house per se, but it's a small commercial property. Mm -hmm. But again, it's still private property that you were supposed to enter to use the UV painting shack. Well, and I mean, and it's also, it's not like once this is up, then like anyone can come use it. It's for people that are, Yes. paying to paint ceramics at this business yes. as like an additional like add-on option to their paid activity it did not seem i i was super weird about the commercial uh component of this i was uncomfortable anybody else object to zero there or yeah it, it's different you know with the the artists who were named to do a mural, you know, they're not self-proposing that, you know, they, they've, and maybe they are, but they've partnered and it's, it's an evolved kind of idea and plan. And this does feel very um, individualistic. Mm -hmm. Private. Okay. And the Renegade Nuns on Wheels project. No. 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 And that just the not a very good um, gauge of success or not or way of engaging like just giving out a couple of free books mm -hmm. I, and this is I think one of those it seemed to me to be uh, a grant application from someone who maybe doesn't or hasn't had a lot of experience with applying for grants um, so yes I know you need to live I know you need money to have time to do things, but you you need a little more there. Yeah, uh, for for this. And we're all, yeah. I mean, and it's hard. Also, you know, like we're like we're also not a residency program right. either. Well, and, and Anita brought up a really great point of, um, you know, we have one we have one pot in which we receive both, you know, organizational. Uh, sort of grants from organizations, um, entities, and then, you know, and sometimes individual artists. So I would be curious if, you know, we would want to talk about that too. Are there slightly different guidelines? Again, boo, potentially more work for Wendy, so I don't want to get a stink eye from you. Um, but, you know, if we feel like that might be something to discuss as a group, to. Well, the Iowa Arts Council has two different project sure. grants that you can apply to. And one is 501c3, you know, you have to be a, a or I don't know if it's 501c3 or 501c6, but it's 
you know, and then one is for individual artists. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's hard. Like for me, as an individual artist, wanting to do an installation, but I'm not part of you know PS1, and, and their application is great. You know, how does that compete? Like you know, they did such a beautiful application. That's you know, they're very good. You know, they're, they're evolved. And so it's just. It just seems like it was not apples to apples mm -hmm. in a comparison. Um, and I do wonder if, if there is a way for us to, you know, think through some of that. Maybe some of some of the scoring criteria is, you know, not applicable for an individual artist, but maybe you have a few others, so it's not a completely separate rubric, yeah. perhaps. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, to divide it is sort of hard. Completely, because we don't really have, you know. I mean, we, it's good money, but you know. Yeah. Future conversation after. <laughs> well, how do, and, how and do we just, look for a total? Oh, it sorry. could be just a mindful thing for for us yeah, to be sure. aware of this, to consider that. Mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have very many individuals, mm -hmm. but yet to just think about that. But the individuals are the ones that are not as savvy in, off in offering a project because mm -hmm. they haven't probably been in the grant writing world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or is it, you know, a, a guideline of you must, you must be partnering in some way with, in a very clear way with an you know, organization? Is that something? Well, if you're proposing uh, engaging, yeah. Like, so definitely things to think about. Is, I do have to, I told this to Wendy, I do have a 4.30 class, um, so I do have to run out. Thank so. you for being here. Yeah, oh yeah, of we course. We added our total now. Um, we have not, I don't know if we decided fully on Family Folk Machine. Sorry. Um, so we need a number there. Where are we at on the total? Right, right now we're at 18,710, so. So we still have money to spend? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have 30,000. I can, I can support money. family folk machine. <laughs> yes, we have plan. yeah. But again, send a message. Yeah, I think this is a good, a good one for, hey, we need to, we need to talk about your uh, applications a little bit more. And how things change and evolve if you're going to apply and apply again. Right. Repeat, well, and maybe that's in the grant. If you are a repeat applicant, please, you know, it can be a, a question mm -hmm. for repeat applicants. How is this, you know, how are you progressing? How is, how do you determine it was success, you mm -hmm, know? And, right. and there has to be a more consideration than smiles on faces. Yes, I, and I've noticed <laughs> that across um, multiple ones where I don't want to, you know, this is something I struggle with in my role writing grants for my organization yeah. of, I can't give you specific numbers all the time, so I'm not asking for a super, you know, quantitative, but that is, Smiles on faces are very qualitative, and so I think just having that conversation with that, with Family Folk Machine would be great. That but, this good. is interesting. Then, if we haven't given away all our money, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know that I could support the ones we said no to already, other than the one we just Family Folk Machine. Right. I mean, I think the other ones would really have to. They need conversations, and they need a they need more back end kind of discussion. Oh. And I do, you know, I, I like the take a load off um, bench project, but, uh, you know, just from my short experience on this committee, I don't think that that budget is allowing for actual expenses of putting a piece into a public space where you have to think about a lot more. It's not just making that thing. It's about placing that thing and maintaining that thing. Which I, you know, I, it's it seems like a, a worthy project so then again I think that's another one that might be a conversation with that artist too and I might steer them to a larger you know mm -hmm. budget item or you know opportunity with parks and um, and and that could be something where if it is really something that could be really wonderful you know perhaps that's something where if we had extra money perhaps it could go to that or it, do a little bit more individualized uh, work with it. So I've got a question. So if we were to just stick with what we've got right now, we have what, 22,000 mm -hmm. So could you put the balance on the ones we've selected and just 
fund more than their request and spread it out over I mean if we were trying to use up all of our money I think that we don't we have a max request of 3500 yeah mm -hmm. that's okay. the most size they can. that um, we could move it to our maintenance fund um, mm. and uh, there, there are, are a couple things that are coming up that will need that okay I would personally be fine with that because yeah. it, it's important and it really does make a difference to be able to do that and do that well, uh, um, do the maintenance well. But, um, okay, so um, I think, did we discuss some, all of these? I have numbers in, in all of them. If we're good with that, we probably need a motion to um, go forward with the awards that we've discussed and put into this spreadsheet. Unless there's, I mean, you can make a motion and second, and then we could discuss more too. Make the motion that we we go forward with the scores and are funding the ones that are on the spreadsheet. <laughs> okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any more discussion on those? Okay. Not on those, but I had a question for you, Wendy, okay. as, as you know. Um, would you like brief comments from, from members of the committee to help with any conversations, you follow-up conversations, or um, w would that be helpful to you? I just feel... If you, I just feel like I'm like, hey, Wendy, have conversations with everybody. Take more of your time. And so I want to make sure that I'm being... Um, you know, mindful of, of your time and capacity. Oh, I appreciate that. But, um, you know, if you, some of you did make comments, which were, which were helpful, and I, and I will certainly refer to, I've kept those for sure. But if you have some, you know, succinct thing that you would really like conveyed to these artists, um, send your ideas to okay. me. Okay, okay. Uh, or I say, will. just look at my notes on the... And I do think um, we should revise, you know, the, if you want to, like, maybe we could send the, that call again and we could all make some notes on that and yeah. make propose to make those changes of yeah. and maybe we list a few you know agent I don't know if we list agency phone do I, I don't know if you want well, they actually had information to contact the different city departments before yeah. on this one but it still didn't happen <laughs> so, so well maybe um, now we have to say like yeah. you have to have um, one thing I would suggest is in similar when we do similar things like this for like RFQs and different things, we only give feedback if they ask for it. So I think that's more realistic for Wendy to say, you don't have to contact each one that we don't fund, but if, right. if they contact you, give well, them that's the a feedback. Is that a way better to way to that. handle it? Yeah. yeah. But don't you have to send them a rejection notice? Anyway? Yeah, we, we will, but it's very generic and ah. positive, upbeat, and thank you for your submission. This is a growing, exciting, popular program, and we weren't able to fund you this year. So, so then I think that's then I. It it sounds to me like we really, as a committee, need to discuss how can we further um, refine some of those those things. So, for instance, budget. You, you need all the line items to equal what you were going to spend that thirty five hundred dollars on. You know, um, but just maybe some general things that could be. You have to do this. Therefore, maybe you know, all the applications will. Mm -hmm. and it might be one of those tough years where if they don't, it just isn't yeah. Yeah. funded because it yeah. didn't comply with the... Well, our, we're due for an overhaul in that application process um, anyway because council has just adopted a new strategic plan and, is at, and you'll hear about this next month because Councilman uh, Alter, Megan Alter will be um, presenting council's strategic plan um, as it relates, I think, as it relates to public art. So um, it'll be good to marry the things that are important to council with the questions that we ask in the application so that we make sure we're all aligned. Um, so it, it, it'll be good timing for that. Okay, so that's that. Then um, do we want to make a motion to uh, move the remaining uh, funds that we had budgeted for matching grants to our maintenance fund. 
And next month I can come to you with um, some maintenance ideas that need to happen. Probably. I'll make that motion to, to move the remaining funds into the maintenance budget. All second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Uh, thank you for that. Let's see. Is this yes and now soon I have to share my screen because um, I'm going to share with you the um, artist concept for the airport mural oh yeah I'm like, Ooh. Uh, okay first let me share my screen ah sorry Exit full screen and slideshow first. Darn it. We saw it. We were seeing it. Yeah, I know, but IT wants me to record the screen sharing part. So now I can share. Okay. How's that for everybody? Ooh, I'll just say ooh again. <laughs> um, see if I can enlarge it a little bit. So Jenna Brownlee. Um, was the artist who was selected by the airport commission. As you recall, we had 24 really good applications for um, painting the airport mural. And um, it, it really was, it was a tough decision for the airport commission. They narrowed it to six themselves. They took another meeting and narrowed it to three. They had the three artists, the three finalists come in and make presentations. Um, they were all just terrific and um, they ended up choosing Jenna Brownlee and she this artist here and she presented two concepts this one which is in full at the top of the screen I'll see if I can enlarge a little bit um, you know I think you can see as well as I can uh, left to right is also shown in segments top to bottom here um, but uh, she incorporated many of the points of history that were requested to be touched on that the airport commission wanted, including um, the, the red devil, uh, which was a plane, the little pig, which was the first real piece of airmail out of Iowa City, um, <laughs> the Hawkeyes, um, the training for the World War II pilots, and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so let's see, that was one concept. And the other concept is here, which has obviously more aviation uh, images in it. And she, I think she was responding there to not only um, historically the type of planes that would have flown in and out of the Iowa City Airport, but also um, indicating that she's able to uh, illustrate planes and the airport commission in their fundraising may consider uh, allowing donors to have images of planes they either own or love or what have you incorporated into the mural. So the commission has yet to decide which concept they want to move forward with. They're going to do that on April 13th. I think it's next Thursday. And then we'll know which of which of these they'll be focusing on um, but you I did also include the um, the contract that Jenna signed with the airport commission so because the airport commission because it's their property the airport commission had to be the contractor for this art and because they're raising the lion's share of the Forty thousand dollars that will pay for this. That was another another reason for that. So, um, the Public Art Advisory Committee is here to say, uh, well, we don't really like that, but we don't, <laughs> or we do really love it, uh, but we can't, you know, really influence over. We don't have influence over the um, uh, airport commission. So, um, you're welcome to comment on these, of course, if you like. Um, the the contract was included in the packet. It was probably the very last of those 178 
pages in that packet. So you may not have seen it, but um, comment is yay, awesome, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very. My good. only comment is, you know, if if part of the money uh, raising money is to include, you know, donor planes or donor preference with images of planes, the second might lend itself a bit better. Mm -hmm. But other than that, yeah. They're both lovely. And there won't be, they won't be allowed to, you know, say, you know, Mr. So-and-so's really cool jet on them or, right. you know, fly so-and-so charter or anything gotcha. like that. It, has to, it, will, it will only be able to be aviation type images as far as we know. So anyway, um, that is that. So nice. um, we can move on to the staff updates. If you like, um, the next thing I was going to talk about was oh, this is weird. Um, the the South District Bench Project. That's the one where um, we've got the mentor working with um, Ethan Wyatt, the um, emerging artist. Um, they're off to a, a great start. Actually, they put together a survey that I just thought was really creative and I'm hoping is going to get them a lot of feedback and hopefully we can reach it here. Um, so they started off with the location much the same as we had in our promotions but um, they've asked respondents how long they lived here, uh, a memorable moment, how often do you take the bus, all these kind of um, things that help them understand who's responding to the survey for one thing. But then I thought they did something clever, and that was to ask what kind of color palette that people liked. And so I don't know if you, oh, you're not seeing this, are you? Shoot. Um, did you see the, you saw the aviation images, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's not showing this. Darn. Well, suffice it to say, they asked for preference in color palettes and presented about six of those. Now did everything go black? Mm. Uh, now we can see it. Is that better? Yep. Okay. Oh, there we go. Um, and then they asked um, folks to pick three of the following artworks they liked the most. And I just thought that was a really cool way of trying to determine some character that might be representative of the people at least who um, who answered the survey. That's so yeah, I know. I, I man, that was I was not expecting Russian Francis Bacon Prince to show up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I just I loved it. I just thought it was really creative, and and they said they've had about forty responses oh, from great. neighborhood people so far. Um, let me stop sharing the screen here. That is so smart. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. Um, so they've done the they've done the survey and they've done um, they went to one public meeting and, and got some some input although there wasn't a large group there were probably only 15 people or so but their idea now is to come up with three designs three concepts and take that back to a wider larger um, South District neighborhood meeting have them choose the concept they like best and, and move forward with that. Um, they had said that uh, because Ethan is still in school or taking classes, I'm not sure if this is late high school or college, I think it's college, um, that he's having trouble right now in school getting all his work done and this stuff. Could they have an extra month to do concepts? And I said, yeah. Um, so uh, at your June 1st meeting, you'll, you'll see the, um, the concept that the South District Neighborhood Association has chosen. Should be good. Um, Sounds like he's in college, if the, yeah, April. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next thing was the timepieces uh, acquisition, and that was the one that uh, Judith Miller had done it seems like years ago, and we sent over to the library to get their take on whether or not they would be interested in putting it up. And um, they said they politely declined and, and said um, that because the work is very large, um, they would have a hard time finding a place that would be suitable for it, that 
um, would also not be welcoming um, to kids to climb on and that and that sort of thing. They were worried a little bit about its fragility as well. Um, and then and also the connection with the library, why the library, why that artist if she's not too um, connected to Iowa City. And so they said thanks but no thanks. So we've got the um, feelers out for perhaps other locations in Iowa City, and if there aren't any in public uh, buildings, um, then we'll see if we can help guide her somewhere else, like the university libraries, that sort of thing. Or what about the hospital? It, I mean, I could, I don't, who, is it Project Art? Yeah. The hospital? Just ask them. Yeah, that's, that seems like a, a good possibility as well. I thought maybe the water treatment plant would be a good place. Um, as well. I mean, it, it doesn't have a lot of visitors, but um, they've wanted public art out there for some time, and that could be an interesting spot for it. Um, but more to come on that. Let's see. Um, the uh, sculpture showcase materials, I thought we'd have out by now, but um, there's just been a ton going on. That'll, that's the next big project to publicize and get out. And then those uh, current sculpt sculptures will come down, I want to say, by end of July. And new ones would go up in the 1st of August, like last year. Uh, literary walk maintenance. Um, that In the winter, we took photos of all of the um, plaques that are in the concrete. and. A number of them are in really bad shape, or they're they're they just don't look very good. One of them has a piece of bronze that's actually gone, broken off. Um, so I've been in contact with the artist Greg Lefebvre from New York, who's a fascinating person, um, and I first asked him uh, what remaking the Rita Dove plaque, one of the original, was it 48, I think, um, plaques, how much that would cost. And um, he's given a price for that. Um, I want to work with uh, John Kenyon at the City of Literature and the university since, A, the university lost the piece, um, and B, the City of Literature organization is interested in replacing it, and, you know, C, it's... Uh, owned by the city of Iowa City, and so we all have an interest in this. So um, we'll see about cost sharing, and I'll come back to you with numbers on that. But in the same vein, that same artist, I've asked him about how do you take care of what's in the sidewalks right now? What kind of caulk do you use? Do you worry about fixing the piece of bronze that's gone, or what do you do with the the little uh, divot that's made because that piece is gone as well? So. Um, we're in conversations about that. And then lastly, Blackhawk Mini Park Project. Um, the, our city attorney's office is trying to get um, information on where Dawson is in his life journey. And um, that takes phone calls that, to people that I can't make. So um, I'll know more about that and can fill you in later. So. That's all I had. Motion for adjournment. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everybody.